best. And then, so today I'll do my very best to answer the questions. And then um, if there's something that I can't answer for whatever reason, I will make sure that I get that back to you and I'll get that information to Danielle. Perfect. So welcome everybody. This is our virtual luncheon. We're sorry we can't see you all in person. Hopefully soon we will be back in person and able to gather again. Um, thank you, Diane, for joining us today as our special speaker to talk a little bit about the LCFA vote coming up on February 8th. Uh, check your mailboxes because your ballots should be there now. Um, and we were just chatting a little bit before we got started here about getting those turned in early, right, Diane? Yeah. So it's really, really going to be important for everybody to vote. Um, and I want to thank the chamber for letting me come and speak. I think you all, a lot of you have heard me talk already. So if you have questions, I'd really like to know what they are so I can answer those. I'll give you some project information, um, why we're going out for the vote. I think you all know why the library is important, but I'll give you some ideas that I have. And I'm going to ask you to give me some of your thoughts as to why you feel like the library is important or what you would get out of the library. And um, I'll talk about what will happen if the uh, vote does not pass this time, because this is our second go around, as you're aware. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of our community partners and everybody that supports the library project and that has over the many years that we have been working on this project. Um, it's your support that really helps keep us going. And it's the support from the community that has driven the friends to continue to pursue uh, getting a library for our residents in Birch Bay. So thank you to all of our supporters. Um, the library uh, has had many questions about why a library in Birch Bay, why the costs, the property, two libraries in near proximity. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about those things today. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is why we're gonna go out for the LCFA, because I think that's the most important. And I'm really sorry about if you're hearing my phone. Yeah. Um, so we are going out for the LCFA for a few reasons. Uh, the main reason is a few years ago, 2019, we received a $2 million state appropriation grant from the state of Washington. $2 million is a really big chunk. That state appropriation came with some stipulations. Um, one, it's not a given. So we were needing to raise the rest of the money uh, in the biennium to make sure that we would be able to um, access those funds. And um, if we were not able to raise the funds, they may give an extension. And the friends started fundraising right away. We had some problems in the beginning um, with the thought of joining the Blaine and Birch Bay library projects together. And we realized that we just didn't have enough time with the limitations that we had and the deadline for our state appropriation to do that. So we split the projects off and we had lost some time. We started our fundraising and the friends started fundraising and doing a lot of events and we were raising money and then COVID hit. And so 2020, all of our fundraising efforts for the whole year were completely wiped out. And um, as you all know, it affected probably all of your businesses and jobs and obviously your lives as well. So that caused us problems because we only had one more year to continue fundraising and we knew we weren't gonna make it. Um, to date, the friends have, and library supporters um, have raised approximately, I'm gonna say $300,000. Some of that's pledges and those pledges are for rooms in the library. So people have said, hey, I like the design. I'd like to put my name on that. And so we have pledges from that. Um, BP gave us $100,000 right away and that really sparked the fundraising for us. And then the rest has come from the community. So we've been fundraising, I would say actively since 2018, and that's where we're at now. Um, the total cost of the building is $6.8 million. If you do not include the three, the $300,000 that WCLS will put in for furnitures and fix, fixtures. Um, so we're really far away from getting the rest of the funds. 
the $2 million reduces our costs down to 4.5 million. And that's the cost of the LCFA. So we know that we won't be able to raise $4.5 million by 2023, which is when we needed to have all the money made, uh, or I should say all of the money together to cover the cost and keep the $2 million. Um, we have had an extension. So the state was wonderful with COVID and they gave us an, a, an extension. Uh, we do not know if they will do that if our LCFA does not pass. Basically, we're tying up money that isn't being used. So um, it's kind of a problem. It doesn't say we can't apply again, but the chances of us being able to um, meet the criteria to get it again are pretty slim at this point because um, after we received our appropriation, there was changes made where you had to have at least half of the funds or you had to meet or match the state appropriated amount. And if we didn't have that, so there was no rule for that. And we've gotten this money um, and I don't think we'll be able to do it again the same way. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, but that's why we really need this to pass. We know in the community, we don't have enough. We won't be able to raise, raise the funds. Um, and the friends have a contract with the library system. So there are some friends members that started before I did. I did not start at the beginning of this project, um, but there is a contract. And basically the library system gave us five years to um, get ourselves together, to get the funding together. Traditionally in Whatcom County, all of the um, communities have raised their funds to build their building. And um, their building wasn't purchased really until it was done or it was donated by a friend's group um, or maybe the city had a building. So this is a little different situation because the Whatcom County Library System bought this property and it's going to be one of the only libraries that they actually own. Most are owned by cities. So that's a little bit different for us. And um, we're getting close to that five-year mark. That's 2023. So we don't know where the library lies if the LCA doesn't pass or the LCFA doesn't pass. What they'll have to do is make some decisions on what's going to happen with this property and what will happen for a library in Bridge Bay. So today I'm just kind of laying it all out there. And I just want to be really honest with everybody as to why this is this is really, really important. Um, for those that want a library in Bridge Bay. So that's the cost. It's kind of the background, a little bit of history. Um, how much will the LCFA cost? That's gonna be uh, for uh, Bridge Bay residents. It's 11 cents per thousand dollars assessed value. That's assessed value, that is not market value. So assessed value is what the assessor says your property is worth. Um, the market value is what Zillow or Redfin um, says you can get your home for, like you could sell your home for. And usually they're pretty dramatic in the cost difference. So if you have a house that's $350,000, it would cost you $3.20 a month um, to pay for the library. And it's a 20 year um, LCFA. So once that's paid for, the LCFA is complete and the library owns the property um, outright at that point. And that is done through bonds. The LCFA is coming to us via the way of bonds and we're paying those bonds back. In 2016, the library system wanted to make sure the residents of Birch Bay really wanted a library. So they did a survey and they surveyed all the residents in Birch Bay. 83% of the residents that uh, submitted um, the survey all said that they wanted a library. So that was, that was a pretty good amount that told the library, we definitely wanted one in our community. Um, of the people that voted, uh, or took the survey, um, they were asked how they would fund the property or the library building. And over 80% said that they would pay a tax versus doing private donations or privately funding. And um, that also led to the thought of maybe the LCFA is the way to go when private funding wasn't 
uh, really ramping up. So that's another reason for the LCFA. And when we did our vote in November, uh, 59%, almost 59.3% of our community voted yes. So that let the library system and the friends know that we were really close to having a super majority and we needed to do this one more time. So that's why we're going out again. Um, so that's about the survey, how it started. The other thing to think about is costs. So the longer we wait for this, the more the library is going to cost. We're trying to mitigate those costs and keep it down. Um, and that's building costs, materials costs. We know with COVID, some of those costs went up. And we just want to kind of keep it where it is. And the longer we wait, the more it's going to be. So we're looking at that as well. We have a four hour bookmobile stop right now. And the bookmobile is great. So I'm not knocking the bookmobile. I love it. And I would never, ever be a bookmobile basher. But what I do want to say is that for our population, a four hour bookmobile stop is not enough to provide service for our community. And we don't have full service here. So one of the things to know, if you don't know this, is that if Birch Bay were a city, we would be the third largest city um, after Linden. So Ferndale, after the census, actually beat out Linden uh, by a few hundred people. So Ferndale's our largest city, Linden's the second, and Birch Bay would actually be the third. Uh, the population in Blaine is about 50, between 57 and 5,900 residents. The population um, in Birch Bay is between nine and 10,000 residents. And I think it's actually 10,115 10, now. So it's gone up quite a bit. Um, and that's a big jump. That's a lot of people to serve. And so four hours for a bookmobile stop does not serve those patrons. That's why we actually need two buildings. The Blaine Library, I know that building needs some work and they are working on their project. Um, it's about a five and a half thousand square foot building. Um, so for their resident size, it, it does work. It doesn't really work with the whole population of what we call the Northwest Corner and that's Birch Bay and Blaine. So two libraries are needed and they will support each other. Um, let's see here. So far, do you have any questions? Maybe I should ask if you, Danielle. Um, so as we just mentioned there, Birch Bay is growing and it's growing rapidly, right? What does the LCFA cost do as the community grows? Does it stay the same or does it decrease or? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. I have it down a little bit later, but the LCFA cost will actually decrease. And um, over the 20 years time, it'll start at 11 cents. It's actually... I think 10, 10, 8, 4. So it's 0 0.1084 cents, not quite 11. Um, and over time, as we add people to our community, that cost is going to go down. The cost share will go down. So that is something to consider as well. If you're not quite sure about this 11 cents, um, it will go down um, over time. And I think it'll end up They've actually mapped it out. So I think it starts out at 11 and it ends up just being either a little above eight, um, if all stayed the same, or just slightly under eight cents uh, as, it, as it drops. Okay, any other questions? Um, Does it affect commercial businesses in the same, or commercial properties the same way, Di? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same cost whether you're commercial or you're a resident. Uh, Doralee. Um, just for an example of how these bond issues drop through the years, we have just experienced uh, the request of uh, Northwest Fire and Rescue to help them raise their uh, levy lid. And they, uh, 12 years ago, they were at 1.47, I believe. That's a dollar forty-seven per thousand. Twelve years ago, and it had gone down to a dollar fifteen. So it had gone down. Do the math. Uh, they were asking for a thirty-five cent increase, but that wouldn't have even brought it up to where it was originally twelve years ago. 
So that's what happens. That's a huge decrease in 12 years for them. And that's because of all the new housing uh, coming in. And, you know, we do have Whisper Lake up there on the uh, Blaine Road, that's 145 homes. I just talked to the developer a few weeks ago and they're ready to go within 30 to 60 days, begin building. And then of course we have the new uh, uh, owners of Horizon and Horizon's first phase is 374 homes. So uh, it looks like we have two developments uh, really ready to go here in Birch Bay. So that will be significant help in the next 20 years for us. As the, as the friends uh, were out canvassing this last week, what were some of the, um, what, were, what were you hearing basically? What were some of the main points that, that were, uh, some of the main questions that you guys heard, some of the main concerns, some of the main things people were excited about? So um, overwhelmingly, we had positive interactions. We were in Baycrest and we had um, very few no's. And most of the, and I would say maybe not even, it was less than 10 in that whole complex for the people that we were talking with. And we talked to um, a couple hundred uh, homes. We, we really canvassed out there very well. Um, most people thought it was a no brainer the last time. And they said, I already voted. And I said, you gotta vote again. So, um, we talked a little bit about that, but there was a lot of support. The, um, some of the concern is just tax. Some people just do not want to pay a tax. And I understand that. Um, some people don't use the library or they feel like maybe they're not going to use the library. Um, they're not quite against the library, but they're not quite for it either. So they're on the fence. So we had some on the fence uh, people that we talked to and um, they understand the need for a library. So we'll see. Baycrest came in at almost 63% uh, in the last election. So we're hoping that we see the same voter turnout there uh, with the, and that was 63% yes votes. So they were over that threshold that we needed. Um, but not a whole lot in, in those areas are people really concerned, just really um, mostly positive. Uh, but I have had some concerns that have been voiced some over the whole lifetime of this project. Um, one is the, what's gonna happen to the house? So what will happen to the vote house? This is a very huge topic. Um, the first thing I want to say is the friends and the library system uh, never had the intention to remove or tear down the boathouse. That was not part of this project at all or the plan to do that. But if you come to the library, like I'm here today, so if you wanted to come down to the site on the back wall, I have a bunch of different renditions. We had some community meetings and the architects we're trying to incorporate the house into the library design. It just became really problematic. Um, if you've never worked in a library before or you don't use the library very often, one of the things that we're really cognizant of is safety and sight lines. So the house is its own structure. To try to build it into a library became really problematic because we had sight line issues. Uh, we had to have two HX systems. We had to just try to use it as a meeting room. We tried all these things. Uh, the one thing that we really realized was it kind of was an ugly design. So here you have this building that's brand new wrapping around the house. You don't really see the house anymore. The parking lot's kind of a mess because of the where the house is sitting. So in each one of those designs, the people that were at the community meetings just felt like something was kind of off. It just wasn't really right. So the architects decided, okay, what if we, and it also, um, and I will say that it also lessened the size of the library. Um, so at that time it was less than 7,000 square feet. It was more like 6,000 um, square feet. And that's a lot of footage to lose. So when the architects got together, they took all the information from the community and the staff and they put it together and they came up with a plan that we have, which compliments and it honors the house. It looks, some people think it's exactly the same 
building. It's not, it's completely different. Um, and when we showed that to the community at the last meeting, they all liked this. They liked that design a lot for functionality, for purpose. The site was better navigating as far as like parking lot and all of that. Um, and they felt like that was the best way to go. So that's why we are going that direction. The house cannot be used to hold books. I don't know how many of you have been in here, but I will be more than happy to give you a tour. It's really small. The chamber had um, a meeting here and um, just having a, the chamber board here, you could tell how small the house really was. So it's not really conducive for the population size that we have. Um, it can't hold the books. It doesn't support the weight. So modifications would have to be made and um, the house would eventually have to be changed but what would really end up happening is the house would need to be taken down and a new building would come up. So we'd have to be, at that point, we'd be paying for two different buildings and we don't wanna do that. What we did wanna do is have someone move the house and use it for another purpose in the community. And the library has been really honest about that. And so have the friends. So we have had over the last four years, um, a couple of people that have, been really interested in moving the house once the library was ready to build and it hasn't worked out for whatever reason their property wasn't the right size um, they didn't have the funds to move the house their plan as far as like the roadway to get to their location had too many obstacles so it wouldn't work but we are talking to um, someone right now that's interested. I think they're seriously interested in moving the house and keeping it in Birch Bay. And, and that's really our hope is to have it moved and have someone else use it. So um, I've been trying to let everybody know that. Uh, if you vote no for the uh, LCFA thinking that it will save the house, it will not save the house. Um, it just It just won't work like that. And some people felt like they could do a save the house campaign if they voted no, and then the house would revert back to the votes. Um, the library owns the property outright, and there is no right or stipulation that says that if we don't build the library, it goes back to the to the previous owners. So I just want to make that clear as well, because there is some misinformation about that going around. Um, and just fingers crossed until the LCFA passes or until we have the funding, we cannot enter into in, enter into any kind of agreement with someone who wants to move the house because the house needs to stay on the property until we can um, build or do something with that. So does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? Sure, wish I knew how to make it. Honey, honey. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. I think Holly has a question. I, I actually do have a question. I, I'm one, I, I don't recognize a lot of the names that are on here. I recognize many. I'm looking at the participant list and I'm wondering if there are people in this um, meeting today learning all this stuff who can help us um, maybe just by having the information you just shared about the house. If there is some way we can do some outreach um, you know, just to make sure people understand the community approved this and the building that is there is is structurally unsuitable. Yeah, and that's been, the library's talked about it. There's information all over the place on social media. It's in some of the uh, news articles that we've put out over the years, but we could get something together and send it out if we, um, if that would be very helpful. Uh, we've got things on different social media threads and we're trying to post on to the um, library and the friends site uh, any of the questions that you might have so we can we can add that holly for sure and so if everybody on here is in favor of this and we certainly hope you all are um, <laughs> you, if you share on your own social media sites that would probably help. yeah okay so as we move along here um what i haven't talked about is what the library can do for you so if you want to put this in chat you can do that if that works for you um i'd really like to know if you are for the library what will you use the library for like why are you excited about having a library i have all kinds of reasons of what the library will do i work at the library 
I'm the Linden uh, branch manager and I've worked in the library for years. So um, I have all kinds of reasons that uh, of what a library can do and um, what they're for and what the public uses them for. But I'm wondering if you have any, any desires or hopes for what you would use the library for. And like I said, you can just drop that into chat if you'd like. And you can raise your hand and raise your hand and I can cover the basics. I mean, so the library is going to have books and materials. Obviously, we'll have those available for all ages. Um, one of the services that we provide is interlibrary loans. So if there's something that we don't have, we can get something for you uh, through a consortium. And that is uh, all throughout the United States, Canada, and some countries outside of the United States and Canada as well. Uh, homework help. So if you have students, we would love to uh, help your student with their homework and we provide that service at the library regularly. Internet and Wi-Fi service. I don't know if you um, have experienced some wonkiness with your Wi-Fi, but you can come down, use the Wi-Fi in the parking lot. It's pretty stable here and um, it's nice to have a backup. The other thing we'll have is printing service. I don't know how many times I have to drive out of Birch Bay to go to Blaine, Linden, or Ferndale to have something printed because I don't have a printer. So um, it'll be nice to have something in our area that people can use for that. Programming uh, for all ages. We really love programs. We love educational programs. We love cultural programs and um, community programs as well. So like town hall meetings. So if there's a, uh, topic that's really heavy in Birch Bay and we want to have our community get together and have a meeting, uh, we would be able to do that in the library's meeting room space. Uh, and that would be really nice. The library will be open all year round, uh, five to six days a week. I'm not sure what that will look like. Um, evening and weekend hours. So we'll have access uh, for the community pretty much year round. Community meeting rooms. Um, so we'll have a community space for groups, business owners, patrons to use. If you're a business and you want to have a staff meeting, but your business is too small, you can come to the library and have that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, come on down. We have those, you know, in Linden, uh, the start, there's a group from Starbucks that comes and they have their annual meetings there and they also hold training. So if you need to train somebody, if you need equipment, if you need Zoom meeting equipment, um, the libraries have all of those and we would have that in Birch Bay. We will have a library express here. It's pretty new. And what that means is our uh, library users here will have access to their holds from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and that'll be daily. And all you need is your library card to get into the building. There'll be a little place for you to pick up your stuff in a self-check machine. Um, that service is at Point Roberts and Lummi Island. It's a really great service to have. So I'm excited to have that here. We have beachfront access. And if you have talked to Ms. Dorley Booth, she will tell you about the 170 uh, <laughs> square feet of Birch Bay um, beach shoreline. shoreline that the library has. And we plan on doing some events out there and it's for public access. So the public will always have access to that space community partner. So some of you on here, I'm community partners with you through the library and the library wants to be a big community partner. So that's for businesses, that's for uh, park and rec, that's for the chamber. And we believe in a strong community and to be a uh, part of that strong community, you have to be invested and involved and the library will do that. A social hub, that is also a word that you'll hear social hub. We know that through the pandemic, a lot of people were really isolated. What we re did not realize was just how much the library was so important to people's uh, mental health and social well-being. Because sometimes we're the only people that they see during the week, and it was really difficult for patrons um, when we were closed. And the library will be a place of gathering, and it'll be a nice place for people to just come and get to see their neighbors and um, get information and then we had sorry no no we no, had no. a couple we holly had her hand up also derek had okay. his hand up okay and the last thing i'm going to add and then we're going to get to what you have to say is um we'll be able to support the birch Bay school 
when that gets built. So that is one thing that um, in all the communities that have a library and the school system, they work hand in hand. We have something called Connect Ed. So every student will have access to the library and um, they'll be able to get books, return books to their school library. Um, and they'll be able to come and of course, get library education either at the library or we'll have library staff go out and help them. So um, that's something that's in the future, but it's something to think if we're forward thinking. Okay, Holly and Derek. So I, I just wanted to add, um, a lot of you already know this, I used to be part of a reader's theater group and we did many performances in libraries for kids. And I cannot tell you how fabulous that was for the kids and how much they loved it. So I can see that, you know, kind of an animated story hour. And um, on the other end of the age spectrum, um, I needed to find out how to use that app that downloads audiobooks, and it was just beyond my technolo technological ability. So uh, thank you to the library system for showing me how to do that. So I can see, you know, just individual things like that. Also, somebody posted in chat, which I think is a great idea, is a, a notary services at the library. Yes. So I have been a big fan of that, and um, I'm hoping we will be able to get a notary. We definitely need one, and the library is a great place to have it. And we don't have, right now, we don't have any notaries in any of our libraries, but I'm hoping that we can change that. So it'd be great to have it here. Derek. Yeah, good afternoon. I uh, just wanted to add too, from the, you know, from the sheriff's office perspective, it'd be nice to have a library in a public space um, instead of housing or, you know, Airbnbs, because it seems like in this world, we've become more, you know, concerned with making money and um, public space just is something that, I don't want to see us lose and uh, you know love to go there and read to kids and meet with people so big a big supporter so one of the things that um i definitely would love to have is we have community helper story times and those are awesome and derek don't think i won't be calling you if we can get this library built and community helper story times uh, we invite kids to come in and they get to meet law enforcement, doctors, they get to meet people from government, local government, um, Parks and Rec can come out. They love public works. So it just opens their mind and they get to learn a little bit about the people in our community and, um, and what community helpers can do for them. So that's something that I'm looking forward to, to having here in Birch Bay. Doralee. I'm looking forward to senior get togethers around the fireplace uh, on those long gray days that we have in the winter time at Birch Bay and Holly. I want to meet you down there for a cup of coffee first thing uh, around at the library. And because I can't get into your gated community. <laughs> there you go. There's a reason for a library right there. No gate. Right. Um, and I want you to know that the median age for Birch Bay, which is shocking, is 53.7 years. For a normal community, the median age is 37 years old. So we have lots of us white hairs that will be loving to be lifelong learners uh, and coming uh, to the library to keep our brains uh, flexible. And also, Holly, I just ordered my first audio book, uh, and I had to have somebody help me uh, get the app on my phone, and I'm just tickled to death. <laughs> One more thing. I've been an advocate for Birch Bay for some 30 years, and this dream of a place for our community meeting space I have set up, I cannot tell you how many meetings with the uh, uh, Birch Bay Bible Church for the county to come out and Birch Bay Bible Church has been so hospitable to us, but it seems crazy. Those are pioneer days when you met, when communities met in churches and there's lots of value in that, but come on guys, we need our own infrastructure in Birch Bay, a resident uh, of uh, 10,000 residents. We need a space to get together. Our only, as a director of the chamber, our space is a little teeny conference room. Tell me, uh, Danielle, when we get eight people in there, we can hardly breathe. So this, this 
building for so many reasons is is so needed in our community and we especially with distancing yes yes well we that's why our board has not met since uh march of 2020 because we we couldn't get away from one another far enough Mm -hmm. but um this message so needs to go out to our community and i'm counting on all of you i was on next door neighbor this morning And I want you to know there was so many, many positive comments on Next Door Neighbor. It was a pleasure to read this morning. Diane, we talked a little bit about the unique location of it being right here on the shoreline and having shoreline access. I know that the libraries have some fun things that aren't books that you can check out. I know some libraries you can check out things like American Girl dolls or other fun items like that. Will this library have the opportunity to check out beach supplies? Yeah, so we do have a library of things and um, that grows every year. We've got games, American Girl dolls and the American Girl dolls started with a donation and we had one doll and she was so loved um, that now we have a a whole slew of dolls and we actually have a doll doctor. So when the (laughs) dolls come in and they're looking pretty rough, they get a uh, hair, their hair washed and their clothes refreshed and <laughs> any damage is fixed with them. But those, the kids really love those. And there's a journal that goes along with those dolls. So you can write your story, um, as to what you've done with your doll while you've had her or him, but for Birch Bay, we're right here on the water. So what we need to have in our library of things is uh, beach gear. So shovels, pails, um, things that you can use that you might as you're driving down thinking, oh, I'm going to go pick up library books and it's a nice day. And then the kids say, can't we go down to the water? Well, you forgot all your stuff. Well, now you can just get it from the library. So we'll have items like that to check out. And uh, one of the other things that all the libraries do, but we'll have it in Birch Bay, we'll be able to add a pack is we have backpacks and these are day pass packs for the state park. And so you get a pass to go in, you get some maps, you get, there's some books that are there and um, a compass and you can go off and uh, take that pack to the state park and enjoy a a free visit there. And we'll be able to add that to uh, Birch Bay as well. But I think if you have some ideas, that's how the library of things grows. So if you think there's something that we really need to have out in our community, um, besides those shells and shovels and pails, please let me know and keep that in in your mind um, because we really want to grow that. I'm thinking we're probably going to need some kind of beach towels because everybody's going to need to wipe themselves down and be dry before they come to the library. So yeah. Um, One other thing I was thinking about too is um, perhaps giant flotation devices that people Mm -hmm. could borrow and check out from the library. Because we're the chamber, we're also the visitor and information center. What about our visitors to Birch Bay? Uh, somebody that lives in California, but it's here for a week. Can they use the library? Yeah. So if um, we have any visitors in the summertime, they'll be able to come and use the library. We'll get them cards. And um, if you have a residence here, but you are not here year round, you can get a card and you can have it. It'll stay active if you use it when you come uh, on your trips. So if you know anybody that uh, has a residence here, but it's just for uh, summertime, let them know, come on down. They can check out movies, music. One of the things that we have found when we have uh, our little pop-up tents and our sales on the lawn is that people come and they get books. So they're looking for that trashy romance novel that they can read um, by the pool or on the beach. Um, Sometimes they're looking for music because they didn't bring stuff with them, but they really like movies. So that's been really popular and it will be nice for people to be able to check those out. And so We'll be able to make that happen. Darlie. Um, following along on that, the seasonal residents, there used to be about 40% of Birch Bay was seasonal. I believe it's less than that now, around maybe 20% is seasonal. I was one of those seasonal, my family, for 30 years. And we raised our boys up here at Birch Bay in the summer. And you know, we paid school taxes, we paid 
property taxes, all the taxes of Birch Bay, and we're here three months. And I can't tell you how much we would have loved having uh, to be able to use the library uh, while we were here, because one of the assignments for my boys was this week you'll read a biography, next week you'll read a fiction book, next week you'll read a nonfiction book. So the bookmobile stopped in front of our cottage on Birch Bay Drive. And that was wonderful. It's when uh, Pat and Patricia will remember when the Birch, when the uh, uh, vehicle would run up and down Birch Bay Drive, uh, the bookmobile, and our boys would grab a book. And the first thing they would do is get on their bicycle and ride it down to the sea shop so they could get uh, their snow cone. And back they'd come and spend that week reading uh, whatever book they chose. So seasonal people here will totally appreciate uh, being able to use their tax dollars uh, and the library if we can make this dream come true. Yeah. And um, Dorley, you brought up a, a thought about um, kids riding their bikes. So if you think about our kids right now, 60% of our kids go to Blaine schools. So that's a nice little railroad crossing trip um, to and from every day when they get home, you know, it's really hard to get back over there. This will be a great place for our kids to be able to come. They'll have library services. They'll be able to hang out with their friends. Um, they can ride their bikes here. They could walk if they're close enough and um, won't have to be in line or wait for a parent to necessarily drive them uh, back to either Blaine or to Ferndale. So I think that's going to be great. I have a really cool picture. It's um, the reason we bought, the friends bought a bike rack. In the summertime, you'll see the kids, or right after school, you would see the kids come here to the bookmobile on Wednesdays and they would throw their bikes down. And so the grass was just covered with these little bikes. And I took a picture of that and posted it. And uh, a couple of the friends saw the picture and said, you know what? We need to get a bike rack. We have all these bikes everywhere. And um, so we have adult riders, we have kid riders. And uh, I know that that will be really popular. Um, and so we'll have to get another bike rack when we uh, do get the library open, fingers crossed, uh, because we have a lot of bike riders here. Holly. You know, that, that just made me think that we'd also be I'm sure, available to do things like bike safety training. Derek, oh, yeah. I'm sure you're right on that and, and the Red Cross training and things like that. Yep, uh, a bike rodeo would be really fun. <gasps> bike rodeo. Yeah. That, that would be great. Mark Sinarek and Derek in the chamber uh -huh. are all talking about that for this coming summer. So stay tuned for more information on that great. for sure. Okay, so let's be positive and let's say that this passes on February 8th because that's what um, I'm really hoping. I'm very positive, so I'm thinking that's gonna happen. Um, what's the timeline? That's another question. Sasha had asked what questions that I get and one of it is when will it be here? We think it's gonna be about six months to get the permitting, the rest of the construction drawings together. And um, we go out to bid for the contractors. So we'll have to get all of that taken care of. Probably the end of August, beginning of September is when everything would start up. So um, as soon as we find out if the um, LCFA has passed, the library system is going to start getting new work on those things. And um, we believe that by fall of two of 2023, um, or maybe winter, it just depends. You know, it's all about weather and all of that with construction, uh, we would be able to have a library here. So the goal is 2023. Um, and we're hoping that, that that will happen. Anything else? Any other questions? Anything I've missed? Patrick, I see your hand. You're muted. <laughs> Pat, we can't hear you. I sent him a little button that he there, should. There, okay. There we go. Yay. <laughs> this is the quiet. You mute yourself. They can't hear you. Honey, <laughs> get out of my, yeah, okay. This is the choir singing to the choir. Yeah. And what we have to work on is getting the people who have, have their ears covered, who don't want to listen to this, 
to answer their objections. And the little thing on the you know neighborhood chat this morning, there were people saying just no, you know, and the people saying oh we can't because. The, you know, right now we're going to go into a recession and inflation is going to hit and all of that. Uh, you know, you don't need to be able to get too many of them to switch. Or you should be able to be, put your pitch towards the people who are a little bit concerned. The fact is that the lines drawn for the tax base is really very good. It's strong. Now, Birch Bay has a lot of problems. Yes, oh my gosh, I could go on for hours about our problems. But we have one little problem, that's a library, and we have a solution for it. So let's take care of this one thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, uh, people get concerned about schools. Well, I get concerned about kids. People get concerned about growth. I get concerned about poor planning. And I have an old wrench down my hall here. It's a monkey wrench. And I'll, you know, I'll point to that. This is, this is how we're operating at Birch Bay. We don't have the tools, but we do have the tools to put together a library. And we already are running the engine. Well, we have the gas to run it, the people to run it. And we're paying into that. So put the library there, get that thing functioning, and then we can work on some other problems that we have at Birch Bay. Well said, I think so. And I do, you brought up a good point. So the recession, um, when we had the recession 2008, 2009, the libraries were uh, completely busy every day. Yep. We were helping people find jobs. We were helping people find services that they needed. Uh, people couldn't afford internet. They completely shut down their um, uh, their cable. So they didn't have entertainment mm -hmm. and yeah. the library became their entertainment place, but we also became their support. So that was how they were able to communicate with people through um, email and uh, apply for jobs. Mm -hmm. At that time, we had something called the job shop, and it was a, a computer that was dedicated for people to come in and just sit down all day and use it to fill out job applications. Uh, we taught people how to do their resumes. We taught people how to actually apply for jobs online. So the library is more than just books and materials. The library does help connect people with services that they need. And um, does anybody remember the days of 411 information? So we have really taken that spot and we have people call us on the phone and they need a phone number and we find it. They need an address, we find it. They need to talk to their county executive and we get the contact information for them. So we do a lot of other things that people just don't really think that we would do. Um, and it would be nice to have that here in Birch Bay. But um, I will say as far as getting out and talking to people, we have some activities coming up. We're gonna be sign waving tomorrow from four to 5.30. If you are out and about, you will see us at Birch Bay Square and we have dates and um, times between now and February 8th that you'll see us out. We're gonna be canvassing Anchor Manor on Saturday as well as the homes between um, Cedar and Schintoffer in that area, just trying to get people to remember to vote and answer any questions that people might have. If you have any questions, or if you know of anybody that does have any questions, you can get them in touch with the chamber. You can have them contact the friends. I think my phone number and probably my whole address and everything else is out in the whole world um, during these last few years. So, you know, people know where to find me, but um, I'm more than happy to sit down, have coffee, talk with someone. If somebody's on the fence or they have concerns, please let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And uh, I do know that this can be emotional for people. Um, taxes are emotional. Paying for things is emotional. 
um, a loss of something that you feel like is really important to you can be emotional and that is the, the building itself. So um, I'm just making myself out, out there and, and available for everyone. Holly, I saw your hand. Well, I, I was just going to add that if everybody on here supports it and can somehow demonstrate that, just showing that the community supports it makes a big difference to, to voters. I know I see James Danger is on there. Birch Bay Realty has been fabulous. They've already got their big billboard up saying yes on the library. If anybody else has the ability to do that, just show that support and people will say, oh, well, if they support it, I'm going to support it. So just yeah. get out there and do it. Put up a sign, do something. Yeah. And when and if you when and if you uh, uh, go in on uh, next door neighbor or any of the other um, social media, be professional, be pleasant, be positive, yeah. uh, and don't come in cranky uh, because this is such a good and wonderful thing that we have no reason to be cranky about it at all. And uh, so that's I think that's one of the main things that the arguing and, and uh, back and forth stuff is, is just not what we want to do. Patricia? Um, one of the things that I have kind of been using with people is this is the only issue on our ballot. So when you get your ballot, you can just vote library and send it in and be done and it's real easy. And um, it is kind of sad. What did we miss it by? 26 votes last 26 time. Votes. So yeah. it came so close and we still have to have 60%. I know that people thought we won because we had 59 and a third percent, but it takes 60 in order to win in this election. And so we just need to emphasize that and get people to come on out and say that you want your library. Yep. So just remind people to vote in your neighborhood, talk to your neighbors, and um, thanks for the support. Mm -hmm. You have the stickers too, if anybody has the signs from the previous yep, we go have around. Yeah. 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 And, and Pat has a sticker on his hat. We also have stickers. Yeah, yeah. Out. We've got bookmarks, we have flyers, we have all information. So if you need something and you'd like to hand it out to people you know, please let me know, I can get that to you. I, I want a package of the ones that we can hang on their doorbells that are the current ones. So I don't okay. know how I get that. But. You tell me how many you want and I'll bring them by. I'll just take one pack. Sounds good. Okay, well, thank you so much, Diane. I think that's great information. And again, I'll pop this onto the YouTube page and then we can share it that way. Um, but great information. I'm so excited. I have all my fingers and toes crossed for um, the upcoming vote. Thank you Yay. all so much. And remember, check your mailboxes and vote early. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Diane. Thanks, Di. Does anybody else have anything they want to share before we depart? Quiet group today on the beach past the new library site. Yep. <laughs> so, well, it's it was sunny. Now it's a little bit overcast, but it's yeah, still but a it's beautiful raining, day. So you know that's a good thing. <laughs> we'll take it for sure. We'll have a wonderful Thursday, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Hopefully, we'll be back in person before we know it. Thanks. Good. Thanks, Danielle. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.